Welcome to Sailing with Lucy and good morning from beautiful Sydney, Australia. In our last video, we had an infestation of sea life in our water cooling system, which meant we had to give the entire system a good flush. While we had the motor apart, we decided to remove the heat exchanger and check it for maintenance issues. Coming up, Jim renovates the heat exchanger, we reinstall it, a heat exchanger is in, I get my bed back, and Lucy has some fun. This has been a complete overhaul of the raw water system on the boat. The main problem we had to address on the heat exchanger was the cast aluminium part of it. It had pitting in two areas and it was mainly due to the turbulence and the speed of the water going through it. It's a erosion called velocity erosion. We reduced those pitted surfaces with a sanding wheel, then we used a rotary wire brush, then a hand wire brush and then a fine hand wire brush, all of them being stainless steel. After the mechanical abrasion, the pitted surfaces were scrubbed with a diluted barnacle buster solution and finally with a very strong one-to-one -one mix of the barnacle buster concentrate with water. And that was applied with a toothbrush. It was a strong but very short exposure and it really etched the pits beautifully, exposing the bare aluminium casting. As a precaution, once we'd done all that chemical cleaning, we then immersed the whole thing in a tub of bicarbonate of soda mixed with water. We did this to neutralise any acid that was left. We then heated the surfaces to be epoxied with a flame gun to sweat out any moisture or impurities on the surface and we then cleaned it down with acetone again. That's when basically we were ready to epoxy. The biggest challenge that you face is that oxidation of the aluminium surface reduces the adhesion of epoxies so you really have to get the surface preparation right or you're just wasting your time. I'm just mixing up the Devcon uh, putty. It's very thick, it's got a lot of fixotropy so it shouldn't slump where I'm going to put it. It's mixed 9 to 1 with the hardener by weight or 4 to 1 by volume. It'd be very difficult to judge it by volume, so I'm doing it by weight. I've got a scale here, mm -hmm. and I've zeroed it with the container. So here we go. That's like a thick yogurt or sour cream. <laughs> Aside from being a great guitarist and musician, Jim is a mechanical engineer who used to design pressure vessels. He's worked extensively with marine products and sealants during his time with Seeker Australia and has been working on our boats for the last 23 years. I think I'll keep him. So here she is after the first epoxy application. I'm very happy with the uh, result in the main area where I've applied it, which is down here where we had the erosion. So that's good and I'm just going to smooth out some of the roughness up there. I filled it up layer by layer. We then resprayed the unit with a hammer tone finish. This has been a complete overhaul of the raw water system on the boat. Today is a very exciting day because we're going to reinstall the heat exchanger on the boat. I wasn't alone. Jim's just getting some hoses like and then we'll be on our way. Was That's why I called. So glad you showed up. Now I don't feel as 
Oh, it's good to be back on the boat again. Are you happy? Before reinstalling the heat exchanger, we're just going to give the exhaust manifold a clean with the barnacle buster. This is what's called a wet exhaust manifold. It has seawater passing through it to cool it. So what I'm going to do is remove the seawater inlet and exit fittings and instead I'm going to attach some PVC tubes so that I can fill it with barnacle buster and give it a good clean and then I'll give it a good flush. Then we'll do a pressure test on the heat exchanger before we install it. It's holding air pretty well. If it can hold this much pressure, it's pretty tight for water. I'm going to uh, remove this tube now and start installing it. Just cutting a new gasket and we're fitting a new thermostat too. Beautiful, that's good. I've got one last thing to do to complete the installation of the heat exchanger and that's to connect the seawater outlet to the inlet of the exhaust manifold. So I've managed to get the red high temperature hose on. It's all good. I put it in boiling water for a while, softened it up, fitted it and I think it's now relaxed to that position. So that's fantastic. I'm very happy about that. We're just flushing the engine block with fresh water before refilling it with new coolant mixture. So here's the scene of mayhem in the aft cabin, which is normally our bedroom, <laughs> where we're replacing the exhaust hose that was overheated when the seawater blockage occurred. And I think we're going to make a decision to also replace the inline non-return valve that was there. These things don't tend to last that long, but the one that we took out looks like it was still performing some function, although not 100%. So I think we'll just get a Centrec non-return valve. It's a good brand and we'll throw that in just to keep things the way they were. My non-return valve. It allows the exhaust water and gases mix to flow in one direction and it reduces the risk of seawater backing up into the motor under extreme conditions. These days it feels like a never-ending backwards and forwards on the water, but Lucy is having the time of her life. The last thing to do uh, to finish off this exhaust install is just to get this non-return valve 
installed, which is just going to go here. So let's get the job finished. If the T-bolt clamp is too big for the hose, it doesn't matter how much you tighten this up, it won't actually be tight and holding the hose. So that can be an extremely dangerous situation with exhaust, fumes, seawater, or if you're not on the boat um, with sinking the boat, you have to be very careful. And how do you know it's the right spot? Well, you can just see if there's a gap. When you finish tightening it, there must still be a gap showing there between these two things. Right. If these are up hard against each other effectively, right, like mm -hmm. that, it still hasn't tightened around the hose, then it's essentially just not holding the hose on. I'm just going to do a quick check of the accuracy of the tachometer so I know that the engine revs are what I'm what I'm seeing is correct. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a reflective strip on the main crankshaft engine pulley. Then I can um, measure it using this instrument, which is a fairly inexpensive tachometer. Okay. So it basically works off the light and uh, will record a revolution every time this goes past. It's good to just double check it, have an idea that, you know, what you're seeing is correct. It doesn't take long to do. I use this method for checking the, and adjusting the speed of the genset for what we need it to do at the moment. So I'm going to put this sticker basically at like top dead centre. How did that go? The digital tachometer gave me a reading of about uh, 1,090 RPM and the mechanical tachometer up in the cockpit, which is driven by a cable, this cable down here, it was showing about, about um, 1,025 to 1,050. So it's, it's running 50 RPM faster mm. than what the taco is showing up there. Yeah. So that's good to know. Yeah. So, when I have time, I'll actually open up that instrument and you can calibrate it at the back of the instrument. So now it's time to put the bed back together again? Yeah. Woohoo! Lucy's excited, aren't you, Lucy? Yeah. Yep. It's a good long time to know what I wanted. And now I do, and I will wait on you. A long time to know what I need. It's now it's clear whenever you are near. Forever holding out for you. Nice, Lucy. Mm. Nice, your baby dogs. Time to make the bed. 
it all fit together it Took a long time To see what was in front of me And I can't lie No matter how I try Thank you so much for watching, for liking, subscribing to our videos and joining our YouTube family. If you hit the notification button, YouTube will always alert you when we bring a new video out. Also, your comments help us to get to know you and inspires us to keep sharing our lives with you. Finally, we hope wherever you are in the world today, that you will feel loved and safe. And don't forget to keep your tail wagging. Lucy! Lucy!